Hi, welcome to Woodworking Masterclass. I'm Steve, and this is my shed. What we're doing this season is we're making boxes. One is a plywood box with a veneer and solid edging around it, and the other is a solid timber box made out of solid timber with a raised panel lid. What we've done so far is made the boxes carcasses, as you can see. Last week, we cut the lids off and we covered up the ply that you'd see when this lid was cut. And now we'll get into the sharp end of the box making process where you start to put your own identities on it and start to make them look as if they're worthy of the time you've invested. What I'd like to start off with is make a stand. Now, that by itself possibly would be quite acceptable as a box, but I like to have a little bit more pizzazz about it. So I'll show you how to make a stand. I've machined some timber up. What you've got to do is work out how much you want the stand to protrude from the box. I like about five mil either side. So what you do, is just measure up the width of your box. And in this case, that's 230 by just under 200. So I'd want about 260 by about 210. Machine up the timber to the thickness that you want and the width to allow for that uh, part to poke out and also to give you a decent platform. I've already cut some up. I've covered cutting mitres in the past, but the reason I've cut these prior is I've sized the ends. Now by that I mean I've actually put a layer of glue over the edges. What that does, it prevents the glue from being sucked into the fibres of the timber and giving you a weak joint. Many times, I don't know if you've ever glued end grain, but you just see the glue being sucked away. And then when it goes together, you get a weak joint. So sizing seals the end grain. So when you put the glue on, you get a much stronger glue to glue joint. In fact, that and uh, several other tips are on the net at Australian Wood Review. Uh, they've got a, an e-magazine that I put up, workshop hints that I come up with now and again, and that's one of them. Okay, so how do we put it together? Much the same as the boxes. Bench dogs. Trusty rubber band. Now this is what they call a 107. Turn the flat pieces out. Place it down. So the band's sitting nicely on the bench. Bit of glue over the edges. And then put your long bit in, a long bit, a side bit, the other side bit. There we go. Then gently push your dogs down making sure that the band is on the wood and not rolling over on the corners. And the good thing about a rubber band is it exerts equal pressure all the way around. Now that's it. Just put that and let it dry. And once it's dried, you'll end up with one like this. Get that glue off of there. Where's my mat? Now that in itself possibly is quite acceptable as well, but it's a bit square and a bit bland. So what you can do is get a round over a bit and just put it around the router and soften the edges, which I've done to this one. As you can see, it softens it and sort of leads the eye into the box. But again, I don't like sharp corners. So on the corners they're sharp, what we can do is round them over. To round them over, you can use, here we go. I use a, a carving chisel. You can use a flat chisel, but it's just quicker if you've got a, this is a 714. And you just knock the corners off. Yeah, get a bit of 180 again. So I love using Australian furniture grade um, timber species because they're nice and soft. Better than blue gum or spotted gum or whatever. So I use a lot of 180. And then you just round them over. 
and it really gives it a nice soft appearance. Doesn't take much, just adds that extra little bit of class. Look at that, Bob's bored, he's just gone to sleep. Am I boring you mate? Price of stardom, eh? Love the way his ear sticks up just in case he hears cellophane ruffling and there's some food. Last one. And there you have it. Which looks quite nice. What I want to do to the solid timber box is something slightly different. So I've got the same frame initially but I want to put a step on these so what you do is same process work out how much further you want the step to come out on the plinth and then cut timber that width so it's got to be the width of your stand plus however far you want it to protrude join it together in a square same thing, use the dogs, rubber band, glue it up, let that dry. And then again I put it over the router which gave it a soft edge and I've rounded the corners. Now all we do is work out how to put those on. I've got to cut these up, so set the bandsaw up to the width that I want, just turn that on be a bit of light turn the bandsaw off don't reach behind the blade use a push stick or something or other to get your stuff away blade stopped now I can get that last bit and that can go in the bin okay so on the bottom whoops where are we on the bottom of the stand, <laughs> which I've hidden. Why didn't you tell me where it was, Bob? You meant to be my assistant. Then sand these nice and flat, a dab of glue, and then just set them into the corner using a square. And you do that to all four. What you'll end up with is a nice little plinth like that with a step on it, which again adds more character to the box. Now after the break, we'll attach one of the stands to the um, veneer box. I'm not going to attach it to this because then we're going to start fitting hinges. So see you after the break. Hi, welcome back. As I said before the break, I'll show you how to put the box on the stand. And again, I'm using another work board. Put your stand on there, look around for in this case, I'm going to use this glue, and it's a very, very thin bead on the inside. You don't want to go in too close to the outside because if it spreads and then you stain or try and polish your box, it's going to show through. We don't need the lid. Pop it on there and centralize it. So where the mitres join, they're nice and central to that radius edge and you've got an equal amount all the way through. That looks pretty spot on to me. Again, another work board over the top. A heavy weight. And now I can safely move that and put it away to dry without disturbing the box and the stand. Once it's dry, then you can put some brads in there or some screws, if that's what you want to do. But that's to tack the stand on. And as I said, I'm not doing that on the solid timber one yet, because we've got to fit the hinges. And here's all the paraphernalia for fitting hinges. It's a good thing about filming live. You never know how this is going to work. Sometimes you can get hinges done in three minutes. Sometimes it'll take an hour and a half. So we'll see how we go here. Big problem with hinges, oh, not a huge problem, but something that really annoys me is when you pick them up, and these just came from a normal hardware shop, they're one inch solid brass hinges, they've got all these annoying stickers on them. So all you need is, where is it, oh, bit of kerosene, 
little bit of what's that 4 steel wool and just give it a good polish I like that it's a really fine steel wool that it's good quality and I think this one's okay all right now we set the box up to all the tools I'll be needing make sure the marks line up so we know which way we're going and what you want the front of the box that's got a fair bit of sapwood on there so I'll have that at the back and I'll have this in the front what I do straight away is not all hinges are square and they're not all the same size so I'll mark a left and a right and you can work your own process out mine for years has been I always mark the top leaf of the hinge so I mean no I know that's my left and this one I'll put an R on ouch put my glasses on because I just stabbed myself in the finger look at that real blood I bleed for my craft there you go that's an R for right now the other problem a lot of people come up against when they put hinges on they join their box lid like this place the hinges on and then screw it up but what happens when they shut the box the box doesn't shut totally it's sprung like that because it hasn't left enough gap for the hinge to close properly so I'll show you how to overcome that in many cases and this is a trial and error job it's one thickness of veneer which is about 0.7 of a mil wrapped with masking tape and that gives me just enough clearance hopefully that the hinges will go on properly and they won't snag now I'll just cut this to size okay a bit more masking tape and I'll tape that to the box section put my glasses on of the box now it's just a question of putting the top on making sure that's going to be held centrally I only do that as a stopgap until I put these little G clamps on. You just line up the edges so your box is nice and square. Okay, put these G clamps on. fine tuning that goes on but that's good okay and this little purple envelope that I have all my pieces in for building these boxes here's a hinge placement it's just a thin bit of MDF with a bit of ply on the end but I hold that from the edge and this is one time when I actually will use a knife to do marking. And give it a couple of good cuts so you get a decent score. Get your hinges. Left one on the left side. Now the idea is you have the middle of the barrel lined up with the middle of the gap and that if you've got any meat hanging out either side it should be enough to even that up so it's all nice and even okay push that down And 
with a knife. And then mark with a knife along there. Do the same to the other side. Now if you want to, and you're very gentle, just take that down a little bit with a very fine saw, just on the inside of the cut, but don't go too deep because you don't want it to go deeper than the depth of the hinges. And then grab a sharp chisel and I just notch out up to that line so I've got nice registration marks. Okay, I'll finish doing this whilst we go to a break and then when we come back if everything's good we'll be able to screw the hinges in. Alright, I'll see you the other side of the break. Hi, welcome back. Just before the break we did the set out for the hinges and now hopefully we're going to fit them. This is the downside of doing it live. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, so we'll give it a go. Okay, you can actually um, take this out with a chisel if you like. You can just <laughs> tap them out and then clean them up, but I'm doing a lot of boxes, uh, so I've actually got a designated router trimmer that I've made a special base for. This gives me far more control in using the trimmer, and I've got a, I don't know, I guess that's about an 8mm straight bit in it, and it's set at the depth of half of the barrel width. So I did a couple of test pieces just to make sure that it's the right width on a piece of ply, then you join that together and these should slide in just with a bit of the barrel hanging out. And that's about where I want it. So, everything's done there. And I'm going to router these. Take this tape off for the moment. When I router it too, I do it very gently and not in one foul swoop. And it doesn't matter if you don't get everything out because you can clean it up with a chisel. There's my little block. Let's see. It's a great little tail dogs here. It's very, very useful. Okay. Plugged in. Clear. Let's go. No, not plugged in. Plugged in, not turned on. That's safety consciousness for you. Look at that. We're turned on now. These bits here I'll clean out with a chisel in a minute. Let's wait until that router stops so I don't put my hand anywhere near it. Set the top up. So you can see how effective that base is. Um, I'm sure if you go to your local Perspex merchant, he'll let you rat something out of the bin. Okay, now we've just got to clean this up. Always make sure your chisel's nice and sharp. It gives you a head start when you start doing hinge work. And Chris from WA, I know I promised I'll show you how to sharpen chisels this episode, but I'm sorry, it might have to wait till next season. Always make sure your hand is behind the blade. That goes for any tools or any machines. If your hand's nowhere near it, you'll never cut yourself. Ah, 
Ah, see, it even happens to the best of us. That's why they make super glue. I've always maintained the master craftsman isn't one that never makes mistakes. He's one that makes mistakes that you don't know about. Okay. I'm going to have to do there. Just leave that dry for a little bit. And we'll move on to this one. give us the gap that hopefully should have taken by now. No it hasn't. Okay, that's what we'll do. Um, get something to give you support of that lid. That'll do. Just so it doesn't bend. Now right goes with right. That's the one we had the drama with. So again, we've got the barrel centralised up between where the two joins. We've got a slight gap in there to allow the hinge to close so we don't get a spring. Now, I never put four screws in together. I only put two screws in each hinge while I'm setting it because then if I'm out, I've still got the luxury of two new holes that I can use later on. And if by chance you do make a mistake and you uh, end up with a, with a hole and the screw's too deep, here's a little trick. Get a match, <coughs> drill it out to a little bit smaller than what the match is, put the match in with a bit of glue, snap it off, let the glue dry, clean it off with a chisel and you've just made yourself a brand new piece of wood. Hopefully I'm not going to need that. This is just an ore, you can make those yourself out of a nail and a bit of a handle. And then we'll just mark in the centre of that hinge. And on the diagonal. So I'll put two that are diagonals to each other. The same here. <coughs> and this is about a one mil drill bit. We don't need that clamp anymore. I prefer a hand drill um, to a cordless or an electric drill. It gives me far more feel and far more control over the depth of hole. But don't be misled, these work very effectively. So you have to be careful you don't go through your job. The next thing, screws, brass screws, old cake of soap. I just use ordinary laundry soap or whatever I can lay my hands on. Give it to the thread. Um, this cedar I'm going in is, is very, very soft. So it generally isn't a problem. But in harder woods, brass can shear off very easily. So just gently put the screw in. It's 
the acid test. Look at that. It's a nice sound, isn't it? Then you just go ahead, put your other two screws in, and the hinges are fitted. So next week, what we'll do is finish the box off. We'll put a lining in it. We'll do some finishes on it, and we'll wax it, and it'll be ready to give as a beautiful gift or to keep as a keepsake for yourself. So once more, it's Steve saying, pulling the shed door down for another week. And remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe.